In this video, I'm going to talk about telemetry and two specific aspects of it. I'm going to talk about the signal strength, which is also called RSSI, and I'm also going to talk about low voltage alarms. Now, if you have a Turnigy 9X like this, this is a great, 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 great starting transmitter. It is compatible with receivers, not only like the one it came with, but also like this one here, which is a six channel Hobby King one. The nice thing about this is it's a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter, so it's not so big on smaller aircraft. Now the biggest problem though that this has and that this has is that they don't support telemetry. And if you need to know your battery voltage, then you have to get a separate reader like this one. And this one here plugs into your battery and then it will tell you whether or not the battery is getting low or not. So here like this. And this one just tells you the low the voltage. And it has a uh, little button up here on the top that you can push to set where, is, where it's going to go off. You know, you can, these are 2.7. If you want to go that crazy on your lipos, you will kill them. 2.8, 2.9. So you want to move it up here to like 3.5, 3.4, 3.3. Depending on different people you ask, they'll all give you different numbers. Anyway, that's what this does. It just shows you a low voltage alarm. So when you're flying around the air, the only way to know if your battery's getting low is if it's close enough that you hear it so that you know the battery's getting low. Well, what the telemetry does is the telemetry actually sends, uh, talks, this actually talks to the NAS32 and the NAS32 can, talks to the battery and this sends the uh, battery voltage and signal strength back down to the Tyrannus transmitter so you can actually see the um, voltage and the signal strength on your transmitter. And then also you can set up a low voltage alarm on the transmitter itself instead of having to rely on something like this flying around in your um, aircraft. The big advantage is if you are flying further away than you can hear, then this will actually <laughs> save your life and you can actually have time to get your craft back. Whereas if you're using something like this Turn G9X and your battery gets low and it's too far away to hear the uh, low voltage alarm well hopefully you <laughs> are timing it or something to get your battery back or get your craft back before it crashes so this is my FPV 250 that actually has the uh, Hobby King receiver on it right now and I want to pull this up and I got I have one connection here that disconnects all the power from the upper plate and then the antenna is held onto this arm there and now the plate the upper plate can come off so now you can see the receiver sits up here and has the cables coming back here into the NAS32 for, um, for control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull these off because we're going to get rid of this um, receiver entirely. The telemetry readings for the voltage will come off of these uh, two pins into the D4R and then send back to your uh, transmitter. Now, the, now for this to be able to read the voltage, you actually have to have the voltage plugged in to these first two pins here. I'll move these out of the these way. These first two pins are actually connected directly to your battery or your power distribution board so that the board can actually read how much voltage is coming off the battery. The next two pins are for your um, lo the little speaker and the next two pins are for the telemetry going back to your D4 R2. And the, this is the first one up here on the left in this picture in my video. The one on the left is the transmitter pin and the bottom one is the ground. So those actually have to be connected. Those actually have to be connected to the RX and the ground pins on here. So the D4R2 comes with these little uh, adapter pieces that plug into it. Yeah. And so what we're going to end up using is we're going to end up using the green wire and the black wire. The red and the white wires are for other free sky uh, sensors that we're not going to use in this video. You can cut these off or you can wrap them up. You actually get two of these wires with your, with your receiver when you buy it. Because the NAS32 and this receiver both talk PPM, that's what we actually want to use. And even though this is, says it's a four channel rec uh, receiver, it actually will receive eight uh, channels over CPPM. So what we got to do to tell it to use the CPPM on the receiver, we have to take one of these included jumpers, we have to put it across channels three and four, like this. Now this knows that it's supposed to output CPPM. Uh, CPPM outputs. Then we want to take um, 
a cable like this and this one just has the uh, little servo in, servo leads on either end or the whatever you call these kind of connections and we're going to plug this into channel one which is this one here channel one and we want to make sure that the ground the black wire is connected to the ground there and reds in the middle and whites on the side so now this is outputting because of this jumper it's outputting the cppm which this thing will come out over channel one and we'll plug this into the channel one on the board which looks like this the top left pin is the ground and then the red and then or the power and then the signal so now we're at this point the next thing we have to do is get these get like i said get the green and the black wires attached on to the uh, tele telemetry pin and the ground pin So I chopped off these wires a little bit and I soldered on a couple little pin, whatever you call these things, that'll slip down over top of those pins. Now the D4R is connected via PPM to the NAS here for sending it controls. And the two pins here, the TX pin and the ground pin, are connected into the ground and the RX uh, pins on the receiver. So this should now be able to tell the receiver what's going on voltage-wise on the board, and this should go down to the receiver so you can read it. Now, there are a couple options with the turn on on the NAS32 so that it knows that we're using PPM now, or CPPM, and we also need to tell it to turn the telemetry on so that it will output it to this receiver. Once you have the NAS32 connected via USB to your computer, you want to open up BaseFlight, and the two commands you want to type in in the CLI tab are Feature PPM and Feature Telemetry. That will turn on the PPM signals coming into the board to tell it, hey, I'm doing PPM now instead of individual channels. You want to turn on Feature Telemetry so that it knows to start outputting the telemetry statistics out of this um, pin here to your receiver. After you have it all connected, you want to go into base flight and configure your receiver, your uh, limits on it so that all your sticks are thrown correctly. And once we have that set up, telemetry recovered. Um, it said telemetry recovered, and that's because it's actually talking to the Tyrannus now. Now, there's a couple things that you want to set in here so that you can um, see your voltage. Okay, I already have my FPV250 set up in here, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the uh, telemetry screen. Here's the telemetry screen. And can you see this? Yes. Okay, what I got to do here is I have set up on screen one of the telemetry screens. I got the total number of cells, voltage, the individual cell voltage, and the RSSI. Now because you only have the power connected to it, it doesn't really know for sure what the individual cells are. It's just taking the overall cells and dividing it by the number of batteries or number of cells that you have to figure out the per cell voltage. So I have that set on my, uh, on my uh, main screen here so I can, hold down, I can hold down the page button and it flips over and it shows me my total cells, my individual cell and um, the RSSI is, like I said, that's the signal strength, and it is right near 100 because <laughs> it's about an inch or two away. So what I want to do is I want to set it up so that um, I can have the voltage read to me at any time. So to get to that screen, you want to go into the menu, get on your, uh, get on your model, and we're going to page over to right here to the custom functions and this again this is what I'm trying to do I want it to be the SA which is the top left switch here on the transmitter this one here I want it so that when I put it into the middle it'll tell me the total cells 12 volts. and I can put all the way to the bottom Four volts. and it tells me the individual cells and that's, this is how I set, have it set up SA minus SA down play value cells and cell and then I got set up to repeat every 20 seconds over here 12 Volts. and there it's off the other thing I wanted to show you is where I set the low voltage alarm 
and I went into the menu for this, pushed enter, page, page, the custom switches. And you have, you want to select A is less than X. And what that means is cells, this one here, is less than the next column. In this case, I got 10.1. So at, when the cells, all the cells together are less than 10.1 because I'm running a 3S battery, it will uh, start beeping. Now, if you're running three cells sometimes and four cells sometimes, your better option would probably be to go over to your individual cells. I love that one. Your individual cells and change this to cell. Then you can set the cell voltage to uh, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, whatever you want to set it to. I'm going to set this one up to 3.5. So once you have the CS1 and the CS2 set in the other screens, you want to come into the custom functions here and you want to set CS1 to play a track called uh, battery low. And that will just tell you when your battery starts getting low. Now if you do, like I suggested in the uh, notes or the annotations, I have a CS2 set up also. Let me see if I can get the back on. There we go. CS2 set up to play a track called battery critical. Now, that way I have a different warning between just my battery's getting low and my battery's getting critical. You don't have to have both of them, you can just have one, but I wanted to have two and I wanted to set battery low a little higher. That way I knew I had a little bit of time left. And then when I hear the battery critical go off, I know that's the time I need to come over and land. So this is just kind of a warning and this one's get over and land before the battery dies. This has just been a short video about how to set up your NAS32 and your D4R2 and your, Tur and your Tyrannus transmitter. If you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments. There's a lot more that this setup can do if you have other sensors, but this is just to help get you started. Anyway, questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best I can. And thanks to Mustang7302 for explaining it to me so that I could get mine working. Anyway, thanks for watching.